It's no secret some of Iowa's most driven and creative people live and work in small rural communities. And even when rising to worldwide acclaim, they somehow stay under the radar. Well, tonight, the secret is <laughs> out about a humble group of people based out of Calhoun County. That's because they allowed photojournalist Randy Schumacher and I to witness the magic behind their new masterpiece. There's a certain happiness, I guess you could say. It's like, yeah, this is going to look really cool. In this age of shrinking attention spans, Lynn Dobson spends countless hours. I came here in 1974. Putting his dreams on paper. There are times that, you know, you, you go to bed thinking about something and you wake up in the middle of the night. Part passion, part process. This is the earliest part and then it goes on down. To the final draft of a pipe organ that doesn't exist. It's dated May 29th, 2009. Yet, I still refer to it all the time. Because Lynn doesn't just design the world's most magnificent instruments. At his shop in Lake City, Iowa. Population 1,200. I've been doing this forever. Lynn's team of 21 craftsmen and artisans. This is cowhide. Builds them. I had a hand in that. My hands touched this work from scratch. I mean, most people don't think of building something that's gonna last for a century. I mean, there's leather tanning and woodworking and carving. Sometimes a lot of trial and error. Pretty much the way it needs to be done. The organ was called the king of instruments because it incorporated everything known to man. You might assume forcing customers to wait years for your product would reduce demand. <laughs> but you'd be wrong. Oh, absolutely, yep. Almost 100 uh, different churches that we've worked in for, for new organs, and then we've worked in a lot of churches restoring. I've done a lot of work in England and, of course, other parts of Europe. But none of them... Nah, I would have never believed it. None of them compare to Lynn's newest project. It'll be a really grand organ. I mean, there's no way around it. 20 tons of customized metal and wood. This carving right here actually would be located right here on this drawing. Built four stories tall and filled with electronics. A lot more uh, fancy stuff, yes. It's 2015 now. For almost eight years, they have worked on this project. A father-son team hand carves each piece of the wooden case and ships it to Lake City from Pennsylvania. All the chisel marks are still there. That's what makes it look like it's handmade. Because it is. Yeah, oh yeah. Everywhere you look on this organ, it's pretty special. <laughs> and because the sound is supplied by more than 7,000 of these. Pipe trays here, and there's some more over here. The Dobson crew had to build an addition to their shop and raise the roof. The longest pipe is 32 feet tall. Its name, the Miller Scott Organ. I don't know what's going on in his mind. Or Lynn Dobson's pipe dream. I started the company uh, 44 years ago. And so that means that a quarter of my career was spent on this job, which is kind of hard to imagine. And this is, of course, the stone pier in the church. The thing is, Dobson's high-end client already has a famous organ. This is the old console. This, this dates from 1913. So they dismantled it, shipped it to Lake City, and improved the sound to match the new one. To fit new pipes that actually work has twice the horsepower. <laughs> part raw power, part finesse. That brings it into tune. A lot of it's all by ear. Then there's the nuances of volume, of the quality of tone, the texture. Machines can help you get to a certain point, but after that it's sounds and instinct on what needs to happen. Remarkable in size, quality, and construction. I definitely think of it as an art. Perhaps most impressive is where it's going.
Fast forward to now, Fifth Avenue, Midtown Manhattan, where millions have stood in awe of the five-story tall sanctuary. Almost bigger than we, we realized. <laughs> St. Thomas Church is famous for elaborate carvings that chronicle advancements in technology, not the least of which is this. It's kind of like his baby. He's nurtured this business along through all the years, and I mean, look at what it's become. It took a year and a half to install it and tune it. It's bigger than life. <laughs> and now Lynn can finally move on to his next project. You know to have it be done and it's just like, what do I do now? <laughs> it's, it's like my job is over, you know, so yeah, it's, it's odd. Retirement. It's going out with a bang. <laughs> More like going out. Almost unbelievable that it's really happening tonight. <laughs> there it is. On a high note. We snuck into the rehearsal on Wednesday or Thursday and wow. Part debut, part farewell. How are you, Lynn? Yeah, good to see you. Congratulations. A sold out concert for the pipe organ event of the century. <laughs> this is the first time we will hear the organ when the building is full. Daniel Hyde is warming up for his tribute to St. Thomas's former music director. This is his legacy. John died uh, completely unexpectedly in 2015. And of course, he never lived to see this organ finished. <laughs> Home to the United States only residential men and boys choir, St. Thomas is the pinnacle for church musicians. And that's in fact why all of these people from all over the country are flying here for, for tonight. Currently from uh, near Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'm from India. The two hour train ride was more than worth it. I just couldn't miss this. It's a very uh, remarkable installation and a unique moment in American organ building history. So looking forward to hearing it. In the age of shrinking attention spans. Lynn Dobson kept his focus and kept the faith. To see a, a church full of people for an organ concert. That people will still appreciate something when it's far greater. Than the sum of its parts. Rest assured, the Dobson crew is working on new projects. Lynn handed off overseeing the operation to his friend and colleague, John Panning. But Lynn will keep lending his beautiful designs to the operation. I was going to say, I feel like he can't retire. Right. You <laughs> yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah, so they're sort of not letting him. Wow. I wish I could have taken you guys, all of you, with me because well, you the did. lens and the microphone can't capture the scale. No, but it was still But you did, and, and our budget wouldn't allow for everybody well. to go there, but that, that's what it's about. Yeah. It was like his soliloquy, it, it's his epitaph, that's like that. Mm -hmm. Talk about going out on top. The, what a monument, it's so cool, great story. And from here in Iowa. That's right, right here, Lake City to New York City. <laughs>